came to the the subject had who knows how many questions. Where's the edge? Oh, you know, right. how could they be lying? Why are they lying? All these questions that come to your mind are certainly going to come to your friends and family and everyone on your Facebook timeline's mind. So uh, you better be prepared to answer them. Well, hello everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. This is episode two of our review of Eric Dubay, Zealot or Con Man. Today we're going to go over lighthouses, we're going to go over curve of the earth as far as curved bodies of water, and we're going to go over the concept of level. We'll finish this episode up with the first of probably several visits to the Felix Baumgartner Red Bull Strato Jump. Thank you for stopping by. Let's cue up the music and get started. And so here's a little more detail about the curvature argument from your site. It seems like lighthouses are one great example. This first one you have is the Isle of Wight Lighthouse in England. It's 180 feet high and can be seen up to 42 miles away, a distance at which modern astronomers say the light should fall 996 feet below the line of sight. Why can you still see it? And then you have Well, this is kind of what I was talking about as far as just reading things off, typographical errors and all. This is the St. Catherine's Lighthouse on the Isle of Wight. Now the current St. Catherine's Lighthouse is 135 feet high. That's the focal length above mean sea level. And according to the wiki page, that can be seen uh, 25 nautical miles or 46 kilometers out to sea. At the time of Zetetic Astronomy, it was 13 meters higher. And quite frankly, ships at that time had crow's nests I don't really find this to be abnormal, although I do definitely question his numbers. They're certainly out of date. And then you have several other good examples in the Lighthouse Department, but another one worth mentioning that people be familiar with is the Statue of Liberty. It stands 326 feet above sea level, and on a clear day it can be seen as far as 60 miles away. Now, as much as we Americans love our Statue of Liberty, it's pretty useless as a lighthouse. Uh, they tried for a number of years, and finally in the early years of the 20th century, they realized that it just wasn't going to work. You can't see it at night. So, I really doubt this claim of being able to see the Statue of Liberty some 60 miles at sea when you can't even see it from the entrance to the harbor. Way. Now, if the Earth was a globe at the dimensions that they give us, that would put Lady Liberty at an impossible 2,074 feet below the horizon. These examples seem hard to rectify unless there's some obvious answer that I'm missing, but I would say this is a pretty compelling thread of evidence, my man. Yeah. Now, that's a cool story, but it's just not reasonable. This is the city of Chicago from 60 miles away in Warren Dunes, Michigan. This photograph was taken from 180 feet above the lake level, and over 800 feet of the city of Chicago is still missing. You're just not going to see uh, an object as small as the Statue of Liberty from 60 miles. Yeah, yeah. the distance at which the light from lighthouses can be seen at sea uh, is just way too far for the Earth to be a ball 25,000 miles in circumference. Uh, another great example is the Notre Dame Antwerp spire standing 403 feet high from the foot of the tower with Strasbourg measuring 468 feet above sea level and so with the aid of a telescope ships can be seen on the horizon and captains declare they can see the spiral spire from an amazing 150 miles away if the earth were a globe however at that distance the spire should be an entire mile 5280 feet below the horizon now again, this is just word for word out of Zetetic Astronomy from the 1860s. Um, I don't see any evidence, such as a photograph, that would demonstrate that this actually occurs. I don't think that Eric Dubay has verified this in any way, shape, or form. He's simply reading out of the book. And as you can see, the claims seem to be rather exaggerated to begin with. It's very simple. All you have to do is show a photograph of this, and at least you can present it as evidence. If not, you know, what value is it? Uh, another one is just the natural physics of water. Uh, it's the natural physics of water to find and remain at level. So, Eric, what you just showed was a water level. You've got four tubes of different shapes. 
that are connected on the bottom and partially filled with water and you see that the level on top of those tubes all is the same. That's what's called a water level. So what do you think about this one right here? Do you remember how you said that the horizon would be level with eye level? Yet there is the water level and the horizon is well below it and that's only 5,600 feet off the ground. So there goes another argument for you. If uh, water is dammed up and then released, it will flow out in all directions until it becomes level again. But on a spinning ball earth, we would have to have oceans that were hundreds of miles of curved water. And this is impossible. I mean, they, they can't show you any example of this happening, but they claim this is what's happening on the earth. Well, actually, that's exactly what we do see. When you go from an observer at sea level, or lake level in this case, on one end, the southern end of Lake Ontario, and you look across the lake to Toronto, Canada, you can see the CN Tower. Now, the CN Tower, if you look at that ball in the middle of it, the antenna on top is half the distance from the tower below that ball. And as you can see in this photograph, the tower below the ball equals the size of the antenna. Where's the rest of the tower? And since that's lake that is blocking us, that lake is curving around. Now here's another excellent example. This is taken uh, from the Warren Dunes in Michigan. 60 miles across Lake Michigan to Chicago. I've actually measured these buildings because I'm quite familiar with them and we are missing nearly 800 feet of the Chicago skyline underneath the level of that lake. So unless you're suggesting that the bottom 800 feet of Chicago is flooded because this water's high, that means by definition that the lake is curving with the uh, Earth's curve. Now in both these photographs we have a significant mirage going on and you can see it in both photographs if you look carefully. But even with that mirage a considerable amount of the lower half of those cities is missing. The water is most definitely curving between the location of the photographer and the location of the city being photographed. Water always finds its level, whether it's in a glass, whether it's in a bathtub, whether it's in a swimming pool, whether it's in a lake, whether it's an ocean. Water is always level. That's why we use water as a leveling tool. Nowadays we have lasers, so you can check again, and the laser will level out over the water. It, uh, the horizon is always flat, and not only is it flat, 360 degrees around you, no matter how high you rise, it rises with you because it's the law of perspective we were talking about and not the curvature of a ball. If the horizon was the curvature of the ball earth as you've been taught, then as you rose above it, no matter how big that ball was, it could be a million times bigger than they say the earth is. If it's a ball, it will curve away from you. And as you rise up, you would have to tilt your head and look down further and further to be able to see that horizon. And using a water level, because as you know, water is always level and water is a leveling tool. At our eye level, we clearly see that the horizon is below our eye level, just as you would expect on a ball. There it is, Eric. There's no denying it. Haven't you done this yourself? If not, why not? But you'll never look down to the horizon on our Earth. It will always rise up right with you. And as you turn around, it'll be 360 degrees flat and at eye level unless now i think one thing needs to be cleared up about the concept of a horizon on a sphere okay when you look out in front of you you will have a horizon at a certain distance and a certain downward angle if you turn around 365 degrees in every direction that you look the horizon will be the same distance away and it will be at the same downward angle. As a direct result of that, the horizon will appear to be flat in all directions because you don't look up and down because the angle changes. It doesn't. It's the same. It's not further away or closer to you because it's the same in all directions. Therefore, it would be expected for the horizon to appear flat on a sphere. 
unless you're recording with a GoPro camera, and then it will change to convex and concave depending on the dip and the tilt of the camera because it's a wide angle lens. This is what the Red Bull Dive used on their outside camera at 128,000 feet. You can see the curve of the Earth, which was the exact same curve of the Earth. If you watch right from the, the liftoff when they started, the Earth was already curving that exact amount because it's just a wide angle lens. And then as they go up 128,000 feet, Horizon's still there, and then the inside camera gives it away, which was not a wide-angle lens. As they open the door, parallel, right at eye level, the horizon was totally flat. And then when they go to the outside camera, boom, curved just like that. Now here is where Eric is being a little disingenuous. There are pages and pages and pages of photographs of the Red Bull jump on a simple Google search. Here's just, you know, a little over a dozen of them. Now what he did was to pick one that had a fisheye effect added to it. Now you can tell that because the horizon is just extremely curved. Now he cropped it out so that you don't see the booms over Felix's head. But if you look at the undistorted photograph, which is exactly the same without the processing, you can see the booms over his head. Notice that they are straight, both horizontally and vertically. And if you look carefully at the horizon, you'll see it's curving. All right, so here's a little better look at that photograph in isolation. Again, you see that there are a number of booms and there are a number of straight lines on that capsule. They're completely undistorted, which means that this is not a fisheye projection. Yet if you look over there at the horizon, maybe even put a piece of paper on it, you'll see that there's a slight curve to it, even though we're not seeing much of it. Well, folks, I think that's about it for this episode. We're going to go on and hit it again next time, but uh, we've got quite a bit to go. So thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I'm doing a few different things with my videos now, and um, we're going to continue that through this series. It's a learning experience for me, too. So please, if you have a moment, hit a like, maybe hit a subscribe, and ring the bell so that uh, when I, the new videos come out, you get notified. We'll see you soon. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Feel my brain getting real sore.